Good morning, Tuesday morning, heading now to Tel Aviv for several meetings throughout the day. Several meetings I'm very excited about, including Karen Raviv, who's an entrepreneur that reached out to me, been connected with her for several years, and uh, meeting her to hear about her new startup, and Tri Ventures, a venture capital firm in the healthcare space that I met in Silicon Valley, one of the partners there, Peter Fitzgerald, and today I'm meeting Michal Geva in Herzliya and the rest of the team there. Very, very impressed and excited about their vision and what they're doing in the healthcare space, so I'm pretty excited about that, and hopefully going to get her on camera. Last meeting, I could not do that. So all in all, it's going to be a great day. And then this evening, I have a call with Turo College, the institution that brought me to Silicon Valley a couple of weeks ago. And um, let's just say some pretty big news coming on that front soon. So it's going to be a great day. Let's do this. a city I, I do not visit very often. I'm going to meet my insurance guy, who has been my insurance guy for a very long time. Also, a spontaneous meeting just popped up. Oh, Easter card in Israel, so that's kind of like, I guess, MasterCard in Israel. Top Tech. An amazing intro from Toby, the CEO of Prove. Obviously, one of my favorite dudes. Uh, so I'm getting hurt at 11. It's going to be a crazy day. Basically, jam packed. I got to find this office. It always amazes me that with all the tech and innovation happening in this country and in general, how primitive certain industries are, insurance being one of them. Hence my love for lemonade, by the way. But my uh, insurance dude, his name is Jack Lee. We've been working there probably for eight or nine years. Super awesome dude. And uh, actually embracing a lot of tech. Anyway, definitely deserves to uh, up his business. So if you're looking for a good uh, insurance guy, ping me, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you. Now heading to Tel Aviv to meet the CEO of Yisrakard. All right, heading now to Aroma to meet the CDO, Chief Digital Officer of Yisrakard. Thanks again, Toby, for that intro. And uh, before that, I'm gonna try to edit my site a little bit, putting together a new speaker site. That's hillelfold.com slash speaking. Check it out and do give me some feedback how I can make that site better. I'm gonna do some editing now. Meeting starts in 30. First of all, before we start, I basically put a gun to your head and said, you're getting on camera. And you're like, leave me alone. And I'm like, no, you're getting on camera. So that's first of all. So that, first of all, I appreciate that. That's number one. Number two, as we started the meeting, uh, I said that, you know, I'm always talking about the importance of context in intros and how, you know, when you make an intro, it's important to tell both sides, be quiet, jeez. It's important to tell both sides, I was talking on my phone. It's important to tell both sides, uh, what, oh, come over and say hello. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You know Tune, you know Tune.com? Tune? We have to talk about this. We have to talk about this. We're gonna talk about this off camera. How are you, man? Hello. Come say hello. You, you, you guys, just passing you, by. Me. Let me tell you something. I don't believe in coincidences. Remember this meeting? Because you guys need to have a cup of coffee yesterday. I'm not, by the way, I'm not even joking. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to introduce Tanya. Nice so nice Tanya is the Chief Digital Officer of Easter Card. Oh, okay. You need to have a conversation. I'm going to, I'm going to, you, you trust me? I of course. You know where I'm going for lunch? Where? Uh, meat, meat Kitchen across the street, baby. I'm going to connect you guys by email. Listen to me. Have coffee like yesterday, okay? This is how business gets done in Tel Aviv. You just saw it right here, real. Like real time. This is, mark my words, mark my words. Okay. That is gonna be the best intro you guys have both had in a long time. Tune.com is an amazing company. Attribution, he runs, the, he runs Israel. Amazing, you'll see. Anyway, okay. I'll check it out. So let's back up. So I often talk about the importance of, of context and intros and the exception to the rules when people that I respect tremendously on a different level, intro, I don't ask any questions. Yesterday, Toby introduced us. I like Toby sends the nicest intros. I should hire him for PR. He like he's our digital guru and all this stuff. I'm like, Dope. he always makes me blush. But so Toby, the CEO of Prove, you guys have heard of Prove, uh, introduced me to Tanya, and they've been working together for a long time. And we, I love how spontaneous we were that we met from like yesterday to today. That was awesome. Um, bottom line is, you know, we sat for the last hour. I've heard, I heard a little bit about just in terms of what is happening in the financial world in Israel, and it, it's not my world, it's full disclosure, but it's super duper exciting. Before we jump in though, let's start from the beginning. Who are you, what's your name? Okay, so I'm Tanya, uh, Can I just inter inter interrupt you? Yeah. Maybe the only person 
well, we've met some people, but one of the only people I know that has double the amount of energy that I have. Like you're an energy. Okay. No, come on. No, but you've got more. How many coffees do you have today? I'm just curious. <laughs> one. So this is natural. So you're, you're in... uh, yeah, just one and one tea. So okay, it's so, just natural. So this energy is natural. Yeah. Okay. All right. So okay, what's your name? So I'm Tanya Talmo. Okay, and uh, your title at Eastercard? Chief Digital and Data Officer and Business Development for Eastercard. Okay, so that's like a beast of a title. It's a mouthful. Um, yeah, it's kind of long, but right. we didn't find any short right. name for that, so we just kept it. Well, well I, I'm less concerned with the title. I'm more concerned with the fact that you're doing so much at such a big company. Um, we, we try to do. We have a lot. You. To, no, it's by the way, me and my team. You know, see, this is this is the thing, right? I say you, you say we. I say you, you say we. I, this is great people. I love it. I love it. Okay, so. We originally met, even though we didn't actually talk, at Prove Day. Yeah. Like a year right. ago, right? Yeah, it was amazing. It was I wonder a great if, event. I wonder if my mic is gonna pick up that noise. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be directional, so it's only supposed to pick up here. But I don't know. I hope it won't be too loud from that motorcycle behind the mic. So you have been working with Prove for We've been working together for about two years now. Two years. Yeah, awesome. Even a little bit more. Than that. Yeah. If someone's watching and they do not know what Easter Card is, what is Easter Card? So Easter Card is the largest acquirer and issuer in Israel, and we are basically uh, taking out my Easter Card. Uh, of course, you've got Easter Card. I have several of them yeah. actually. Unfortunately, I shouldn't have so many. I have way too many. I have like, ugh, it's, it's, is, is diners also Easter Card? No, no that's Visa. Yeah, and like, okay, I don't know. I have too many. I have like three or four Easter Cards. It's ridiculous. Um, we are such a cool company. Yeah, see that. <laughs> so okay, so I mean, what what is if if you would like, is it a credit card company? Company, is it a, what is it's a credit card company. Okay, that's yeah. okay. doing both like acquiring and issuing. So okay. that's the unique. How big is Easter Card? It, we've got 48 percent of the market share. So it's 48 percent market yeah. share. That's like a dream. It's a dream, Holy but cow. it's also you know um, can be a challenge sometimes to maintain that. Because if you're working at scale, that's like oh, yeah. unprecedented. And, and you know uh, a lot of companies are getting into our field and space and, right, and of right. course the big ones are the ones that it's easier to okay, have I'm, a just, I'm just showing off my new Apple t-shirt that I just got last it's night. Nice. Just got it. it from Apple headquarters last mm -hmm. night. My friend Eugene who's a, is a software engineer at Apple came to meet me and he brought me like three t-shirts from Apple. Anyway, okay, sorry, this is my ADD in action. Right? <laughs> All, All right, so um, what is a chief digital officer at a credit card company mean? What do you it's, do? It's a good question actually because um, you know most of the corporates like the old, it, they 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 seem that they know what digital is. Right. But digital is not just you know digital marketing or just having some website with some self service and so forth. Digital is is, is a way of uh, interacting with your customers and engaging with them, and it's much more than that. Right. So basically, digital is not just about websites and some apps right. and whatever. It's a uh, change in in, in the way in the, in the way you work and the way you approach everything. Right. So it's. I'm gonna make it, I'm I'm gonna make a, a, an analogy here. Comparison. People talk about mobile, right? A lot of times people think mobile is just taking a website and crunching it down to mobile. It's, it's a different philosophy. Same yeah. thing with digital. It's not like you're taking billboards, you know, or let's call it old school marketing and just, you know, making them compatible to the. It's a completely different mindset. It's a different, you know, user behavior, yes, different philosophy yes, yes, completely. Exactly. And I don't think many people get that. I, I hope they, they started to, right. but I agree that until now, a lot of, play, a lot of times people see it as the plain, you know, transformation to the digital sphere when it's actually a way of thinking and a way of doing 100%. things different. That, uh, by the way, that word that you just said, transformation, that's like the word. All these companies, all these old school companies now have like the digital transformation guy, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have many friends that that's their role. Digital transformation, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly how you take a company that's old, old school, and I mean, not, no, not naming names now, but there are many, many companies in the local industry that are super old school, that are now trying to transform digitally, and it's a challenge, it definitely is a challenge. It's a huge challenge. But, okay, so so there's that, but you're also, you do the partnerships, like with Prove and other things, T talk to me about that. Do you work with a lot of kind of local? Yeah, we, we work with a lot of uh, FinTech uh, companies, and not only FinTech, but a sort of company that we can work with and with the ecosystem, so it's really exciting. It's awesome. We found amazing companies in the data sphere. Lately, Israel is full of data, really strong data companies that are doing all sorts of different applications and, 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 and things around data, and it's, it's really blowing your mind away. And also a lot of, um, lately we have a lot of um, uh, things around self-service and, and, and digital self-service and so forth and so on. And even 
even in the traditional call centers, a lot of new tech is coming in there in order to make them more efficient and right. more. Love so it. it's, it's interesting. First of all, I have a couple of things to ask you. Number one, where's your English? Really good English. Huh. Just, uh, I don't know, from traveling a little bit, but I've always born and lived in Tel Aviv. So. You have a little bit of a British thing going on. Um, I catch accents very quickly. So it just, you know, comes and goes, and sometimes it's more yeah, Australian. It comes and goes. <laughs> okay, wait, you know, I want to tell you something. Um, Elon Gold is a comedian. Highly recommend you Google him afterwards. Watch, he has a specific thing on, uh, on accents. Okay. And he goes, Brits can say whatever they want, and they sound smart. Yeah, he's like, I totally I'm not going to give you the example that he says, because it's a little bit vulgar, but... And there are kids watching, but watch this thing on accents. It's hysterical. Okay. That's number one. My second question to you. Are you having fun? All the time. It's amazing, right? Uh, I mean, we're I sitting here right now in the middle of Tel Aviv, and like, you just saw this guy from two. Yeah, I mean, it was it's, well, This fun. is how things get done in this country. It's, it's amazing. There's just endless innovation, and it's super cool. Let me ask you a third question. I'm going to put you on the spot. You could say no. You can't really say no. You can't say no. <laughs> if there's an entrepreneur watching who thinks that they should be on your radar, there are entrepreneurs watching who are going to say, I want to get on Mr. Card's radar. What is the best way to get on your radar? For example, can they send you a deck? Or should they do it in a different way? Do you have like a website that they can sign up to run a pilot? Like how does, how does that work? So basically we have with Proof this amazing platform. So you can definitely reach out through the Proof platform. Beautiful. And then, you know, like- I love it. Plugging Proof and I didn't even know it. Yeah, yeah, love no, it. so definitely. But also you can always write like an email, send a deck, send a few words and you know, we are you always- email? Yes, yes, of course, and we are always happy to meet them here. Should I ask, should I ask her for her email address? Of course, it's not a secret. No okay, problem. I don't want. I feel you know you're like a hot shot. I don't want to like. Uh, I don't want people bombarding. No, no, I'm okay, happy what's your, to get what's your new uh, new things. Uh, it's uh, T Talmon, which T T A L M O N. Yep. At isracard.co.il. Beautiful. Very simple. Joseph, put her email right there. If you're a fintech company, data company, or any other company that you think has synergy with a company like Isracard, or maybe even if you think. Tanya has some insights that you think, don't bombard her, but if you think you wanna you know, shoot her an email, ask her a question, uh, super duper responsive to the point that like, Toby made the intro and we're having this meeting like less than 24 hours later. So yeah, shoot her an email, you can maybe include in the subject that you heard about her on the vlog, so she has context, as you talked about. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's amazing what you're doing. Keep kicking butt. I'm, I must say though, yes. that if they will bother me, I will email all those emails. <laughs> Forward them all to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. All right, well next time, I don't know, are you a, are you a, are you a, like a meat eater, a carnivore, or like a vegetarian? Or, or you are? Or How come we didn't do steak then? What is this uh, coffee next garbage? Next time we'll do steak then. Follow up, 2.0 meeting is over <laughs> steak. We'll do that. Very, very cool to meet you. And beyond what we talked about, beyond what we said here and off camera, Anything that pops in here that I can help with. Any friend of Toby's is a friend of mine, but beyond that, you know, like I said, you know, if I help, this is my this is my business lesson that I've learned over the last 10 years. When you help others win, you end up winning. That's I it. totally agree. What wow. you give, it's what you get. 100%. And it's... By the way, this is like the noisiest corner in Tel Aviv. <laughs> anyway, it was fantastic to meet you. We'll continue the conversation next time over steak. And uh, yeah, good luck with everything. Thank Talk you very soon. Much. So I am running to my next meeting, so I'm doing something I don't often do, and I'm doing a walking interview, <laughs> because I don't have time to do a sit-down interview. And also, this, is, this isn't gonna be our main interview. When you launch your platform soon, that will be the main interview. But first, let's talk about who you are. Yeah, What's hi, your name? I'm Karen. Karen, how did we connect? <laughs> Through Facebook, I'm a, I'm a stalker. Love it. Okay, so we connected and you, you basically reached out. I have no, you hear my voice, by the way? I don't know what the heck's going on with my voice. No, that's good. Okay, you reached out and you're like, uh, you know, let's let's have lunch. I said you had me at steak. How was that steak, by the way? Oh, the steak was amazing. And that carpaccio? I'm, to I'm totally paleo, so it was really Are you really, good. by the way? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, you mentioned Full you don't eat carbs. Paleo. Really? Yeah. For how long? Uh, three years. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm on Atkins, it's a little bit more moderate. Ah, but whoa. Yeah. Moderate? Oh well, yeah, paleo is no. like, like zero carbs, no? Isn't no, it? of course you eat. Oh, really? Atkins is zero ca carbs. Yeah, well, I don't, no? eat, I don't eat much carbs, but uh, how is that carpaccio? Oh, it was amazing right? with the gold. Gold Mantle. goose liver carpaccio. <laughs> okay, so we're not gonna talk about what you're doing because it's early and it's not launched, but let's just say this. I could say a sentence okay. about so it. Okay, so yeah. do, do you have the name of the company that you can talk yeah. about or not yet? Yes. All right, what's the name of the company? Okay, so it's Wizor. Wizor, W-I-Z-O-R? W-H-I-Z-O-R. Okay, W-H-I-Z-O-R, okay. Yes, and we're creating the new career consulting gig platform. We're connecting HR managers and recruiters and independent career coaches to millennial students, uh, graduates, 
uh, Love it. Luminis, yes. So it's specifically to help with, with consulting and career guidance, let's call yes, it. Yes, it's practical. It gives uh, the students and the graduates practical tools to develop themselves, to find themselves to, uh, in the job market. Love it. Yes. And if someone is watching and they are either an HR professional or a millennial that wants to learn more about this, What's the best way to contact you? Uh, so right now we have the website, like, but in about two weeks you can definitely go inside the app and you can start consulting there, you know? You but, can... but I mean if they want to contact you. Oh yeah. So I it's don't... Karen, K-E-R-E-N, at Wizor, W-H-I-Z-O-R.com. Beautiful. Love it. Awesome. I'm super late to my next meeting, so I'm going to run. We should do this yes. again. This is a lot of fun. Thank you Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Next meeting, True Ventures a phenomenal venture capital firm in the healthcare space. But before that, a thing of real beauty. A few episodes ago, when I was meeting with Omri Shore, I, I said, you know, that his money, beyond the money that he raised in terms of the quantity of the dollars, is the quality of the dollars. And the first kind of investment uh, body that I mentioned was TriVentures, who I only met with a couple of I'd say two months ago, first time I ever heard of TriVentures, which is a problem, but, but that's a topic for another time. Uh, but I have since, you know, I, I, maybe I use the expression blown away too much, but I'm blown away by, by what I see here. And that's true for Peter in, in, in Silicon Valley, and that's true for the team here. But I want to start from the beginning. We can't really start from the beginning because you, you have more experience that we could talk about this for like four hours. But let's try to like sum this up. Who are you and what is your story? Okay, so my name is Michal Geva and I'm the founder and managing partner of TriVentures. TriVentures is a venture fund focused on medical devices and digital health. What's are, Tri, by the way? What's the Tri? Tri, well, we started three people, Peter mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, Marty Leon, and myself. And okay. I'm very, very glad to say that today we're group of 12 individuals with offices here in Ertzelia and in the Bay Area in Menlo Park uh, with uh, with amazing views for the most amazing important. views by the way most uh, next meeting I have to bring my drone like I, I gotta fly <laughs> yeah, out we're it's very amazing. very fortunate but more fortunate to have an amazing team Natalina Nadivi our partner that has been working with us for over three years and um, Nadav um, mm -hmm. Klein yeah and Nadav Klein our PhD in bioinformatics because we're doing a lot of digital health and transformational health and this is actually our, our main effort here. We're great believers that the healthcare that we're consuming today is about to be trans Format, transformed. transformed into an amazing uh, way, mostly because of the data that is available today. Israel has become the first um, country to transform to be digitalized about over 20 years ago. That's a statistic I didn't even know until today, yeah. which is incredible. The first country in the world. The first country in the world that have transitioned its medical records to electronic medical records, whole incredible. hospital systems that went from paper to paperless. And America is still not there? America has been going through that but actually has been pushed to do that through incentives only in the past five, okay. six years. So the amount of data reservoir that is today here available from lab, from uh, imaging, from clinical is just, it doesn't have any, it's uncomparable to anything in the you, world. You know what's really interesting? I often talk about, and I'm sure you do as well, about the, I'd say, um, disproportionate amount of tech in a country the size of New Jersey. Mm. And that's and that's great, and, you know, number three on NASDAQ and all the statistics we could all say in our sleep. But when it comes to healthcare, there are some statistics that, you know, are just uh, mind-boggling. Like, how is it that a, that a, I don't even know how to say Kupat Cholim in English. I mean, HMO. HMO, that's the word I was looking for. In Israel, it's number two in the world in terms yeah. of medical databases. It's number two in the world, largest data database. Kaiser Permanente in California. Number two in the world. Mm -hmm. And you look at Israeli hospitals, like, you know, are we allowed to talk about your new partnership or? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so we'll just give a shout out. So Sheba, for example, one of the biggest hospital in Israel? The biggest hospital in Israel, and the largest in the Middle East and one of the largest in the world with 2,000 beds. 2,000 beds, a country that is, again, smaller than New Jersey. I mean, these things are, are, to me, is, you know, at the core of why I find this whole entire ecosystem to be so exciting. Yeah. But let's transition because we could literally talk for three hours and my, so, viewer, my viewers have ADD like all of us, so I have to keep it. <laughs> but by the way, I really, I, honestly, no jokes. I actually think I want to do an entire episode on TriVentures, but that's a topic for another time. <laughs> let's talk for one second about your big news. 
Okay, so the big news is that although we've been working in probably the first professional investor to do digital health in Israel, and that started many years ago. Before digital health was a word. Before digital health was a word. Right. We actually called it eight years ago. We called it when IT meets MT, medtech. Being everybody thought we were crazy. Uh, yeah, I would have been very angry if I was your marketing guy. That yeah, day. I know. Like, I you know. got to come up with a better. We you are. should have coined digital, whatever. <laughs> open up a Wikipedia page under Trivent. So we're going to do now transformational health because I think digital health is actually too small to the new tsunami that we're going under, and this is happening. A few I'm years ago, I said it will happen. Today, it is happening. It's here. It's here. The future is here. And I think, you know, we'll see it coming in a more meaningful way to the patients, to the consumers, to the people, I Incredible. think in the next five to 10 years, because there's tons of technologies and a lot of new business models that are available today. You put those two things together, you add data, right. and you add the mentorship and capital, and you have a winning horse. And this right. is what we did in our new um, expansion of the fund. Tri Ventures is expanding to two new funds. One is a unique collaboration with Sheba Medical Center that uh, you mentioned. By the way, this is like literally a scoop right now. I'm just it saying, is, like is. nobody's written about this. Well, not nobody, but this is like one of the first people on the internet. So I'm glad to say that um, Israel actually, you know, Sheba is owned by the government. So just last week, after a lot of work, because it's negotiation with the government. Years, I'm got, imagine years, no? Yeah, was a long time because it's basically taking assets, national assets, and providing it to startups to come with new technologies that would help patients and hospitals and healthcare systems, not just in Israel, but actually around the world. Incredible. We would like to see Israel as an engine of growth in, in terms of um, worldwide digital and transformational health. And that's what's the idea. So we're taking uh, this partnership with Shiba will allow not only to work with the hospital um, labs, clinicians, and uh, personnel, but actually tap to their um, digital data and provide startups the ability to not need to work and, and contract for oh, somewhere for between a year of work um, and do it in two, three weeks. This, uh, we're, with this uh, fund is called Tri Ventures ARC. It will be based in the innovation center called ARC in Sheba, which will provide incredible ability to accelerate technologies from within Sheba and a lot of technologies from outside of Sheba, from Israel and from the world. Wow. We'll provide them capital through the fund, but we'll provide them also the ability to work with the data. So both of us just got an, a uh, WhatsApp message from a mutual friend who I don't know how else to describe it besides the fact that I have a man crush on him, uh, Amir Haramati from Spark. <laughs> he's who, amazing. He was on a vlog in the, in the past, actually, uh, showing, uh, he, he just coincidentally sent it to both of us, that uh, an article quoting him about the, I think you called it the data economy, is that what yeah. you refer to? I mean, you know, it's how, how meaningful and how valuable data is. I'm literally reading, I think for the third time right now, Lean Startup, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you cannot innovate without data. Data is your, your gasoline, right? Yeah. And so these guys who are building healthcare startups, or in general, just startups, innovation, have now have access to, I don't want to say infinite, but pretty almost, darn close, al almost infinite. infinite medical information from freaking Sheba Medical Center. It's, it's huge, it's, it's astronomical. So this is like a crazy exciting partnership that you guys are, are announcing now. And, and this is just the beginning, because we would like to take this platform and expand it and have more and more right. academic medical centers, payers, providers, not only from Israel, but from around the world, to tap into this um, um, platform of data and enable more um, cohesive data lakes that will enable to accelerate and bring more technologies. And yes, we are moving from an oil economy to a data economy, and like in other in sectors, but healthcare has tremendous amount of data. One of those sectors that as you accumulate more and more data, it's just more valuable. There you go. And this is the- Amazing. I have two things to say. First of all, how do you have such good English? It just occurred to me, like you're Israeli. I am Israeli. No, but like you're very, no seriously. Like, I'm dreaming in English when it has to do with work. Did you live in America? Uh, just for a short period of time, a couple of years. But no, like is there, do you like, how do you? Yeah, I relocated, I, I relocated to the Bay Area about 16 years ago. For how long? And uh, a couple of years, I uh, had helped run a company there that was later. I wish I had English like you. Okay, <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna say one thing, and this kind of sums up why I'm, I'm so excited about this. You know, I told you guys, when I, when I speak globally about Israeli tech, I talk about all the different aspects that make Israeli tech so exciting and so extraordinary. I talk about how 
how all the multinationals are here on the ground building core elements of their experience, Facebook, Google, etc. everyone basically. Um, Apple, you know, the iPhone 10, this is Israeli tech right here, it's built here, five minutes from here. And then I talk about all the top tier VCs in the world pouring money into Israel, and I talk about all the unicorns in Israel, these things are all great. But the punchline of my talk is always one and the same. It's always the signs of, a, of real maturity, the fact that Israel's really becoming a mature ecosystem and not startup nation, as in I'll build a venture and flip it to Google, but actually a mature ecosystem is impact tech. It's companies that are saving lives and, and really, you know, I don't want to say light onto the nations, but making the world a better place. Let's just mm -hmm. say that. You guys are leading the way. Really, you are leading the way. You are the Red Bull of the healthcare space in Israel. Well, thank you very much for the compliment. I think it's objective. I think, it's quiet, objective though. I think this is why you don't know us, and probably you should work on that. Well, we'll but fix we that. are. But we are. When we started Tri Ventures, it was important for us not just to build it to, in order to bring capital. Actually, right. when we started it, Peter and myself, the idea was not to start a venture fund, but was. The idea was to bring the international flavor to the early stage right. entrepreneurs, and that's why um, we partnered. Actually, Peter is a professor in Stanford, and he's love one of, him. Yeah, yes, he's amazing, <laughs> and he is um, he's one of the smartest people that really understands and connects the dots. Started about 20 different companies. Used to run a venture fund in the Bay Area. He's an MD and an PhD in electrical engineering. He's really the real thing. Different level. He is on a different level, and we're very fortunate, not only on the tri ventures level, but on a country as a patriotic Israeli person. I am extremely thankful for the fact that he's been part of us for the last decade and, and helped it, uh, helped it. And he spends about a quarter of his time That's here crazy. in Israel on the ground because you can't do those things by remote control. Right, 100%. And this is also one of the reasons that on the other side, not just working on the fund level, but companies were getting, we, we're trying to invest only in areas that we can understand and then hopefully bring value. Right. And on the other hand, work very, very closely with the industry. So by design, a lot of our strategics, a lot of our investors are actually strategic partners, meaning groups like Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, Abbott, Boston Scientific, Samsung, Nikon, Intermountain Health, which is a healthcare organization. All those people are investors in the fund. They don't have any rights. But they sit on our shoulders, we see five, six hundred different companies every single Incredible. year. Incredible. And we try to help not only the companies that we invest in through those relationships, but actually the whole ecosystem. So, so I just want to say one more line about Peter, and that is, I often talk about this, you would think that there'd be a correlation between success and ego. You would think that a person has achieved his level of success would have somewhat of an ego. We left that meeting, and I'm telling you, we met some ridiculous people that day. Like, like ridiculous people. We all left that meeting, we all looked at each other and we were like, that was the best meeting of the whole day. That guy, he was like, how can I help you guys? And I'm like, why do you want to help us? Why are you, I mean, forget all the, he, the guy is just literally, as we say in Yiddish, a mensch. That's he what he is. is. Mensch. That's the most important thing. One of a kind. Honestly. Anyway, listen, bottom line is, I'm incredibly excited about what you're doing. I think, I think to sum up everything, I think it's fair to say that if um, Israel used to be cyber nation, startup nation, I think healthcare is the next wave. It's where it's going and there's, you know, one leader, both historically, meaning that was here first, but also in terms of investing in the best deals, bringing the most value, bringing the, the you know, largest amount of expertise, and that's Tri Ventures. TriVentures.net, right? Yes. Why not .com? It's a toy store. In yeah. Let's work on that. All right, Mikhail, thank you so much for your time. Thank it was amazing. You. And uh, listen, I'm going to say it on camera. I've said it 80,000 times off camera, but I'm going to say it now so it's documented. Anything I can do to help in any capacity whatsoever. I, I think this is a phenomenal story and the world needs to know about it. So you let me know how it can help, right? Amazing. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. How was that for an incredible day? You know, diversity, and I'm being careful here, is an issue. It's an issue everywhere, but it's an issue in Israel as well. Although, I would like to point out that if you look at today's interviews, today's meetings, you'll discover how incredible some of the women are in this tech ecosystem. And again, not in any way saying there isn't an issue, there is but there are a whole lot of phenomenal women doing incredibly innovative things in the Israeli tech ecosystem. Today, you got a glimpse of those women, some of them. More to come, tomorrow's Powtoon Day. See you then.